All right, welcome. This is the Unit 8 Review, Bare Bones Edition. I'll try and go back and make a better one after this, but this is all you're going to get right now. Sorry, sorry. So here we go, 8.1. Some review here. So we had this. We're talking about finding the indicated roots. All right, remember, some roots have uh, different uh, things. Even roots, when we take the even roots, so that's like taking the square root of 64, Remember, we could have a positive or a negative 8. For even roots, you could have positive negatives. For odd roots, the sign is you're only going to have one sign, and it's going to be whatever this is. So the third root of negative 27 is negative 3. Negative 3. Down here, is it possible to take an even root of a negative number? No, remember, there's no number that we can multiply that comes out four times that'll come out as a negative number so this is no real roots all right down here at the bottom so we have negative 243 to the three fifths so essentially I want to have the fifth root of negative 243 that's the first thing I want to do and then I'm going to take that to the third power well what number times itself five times equals negative 243 that's negative three and negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 27. All right? So that is 8.1. 8.2, what we have for 8.2, we have some exponent rules. This one we're adding, uh, so we have to have like terms. It doesn't look like we have like terms, but over here we have some things we can do. We have a power to a power rule. Our power to a power rule tells me that I'm going to multiply those. So over here we have 4x to the 4 fifths. When I multiply 3 fifths times 10 thirds, I get 2. When I multiply 6 over 25 to the 10 thirds, I get 4 fifths. 2 squared is 4. And so now I have like terms and I can add them together. 8x to the 4 fifths. All right. Over here, I want to take the fourth root of 486, a to the six. So I need four pair. I need um, looking for quadruplets. I know off the top of my head that six times 81 is 486, and I'm going to rewrite this. A to the six. I'm going to write it. It's four a's and two a's. I keep going. I know that 81 is nine times nine. Now the reason I did this was I have an a to the fourth that can come out. My a squared has to stay because I don't have enough to take it out. 9 is 3 times 3 and 3 times 3. So here now I have uh, quadruplets. So I'm going to take it out. 3a. So all this is gone. What's left? 6a squared. Okay? That is 8.2. All right, little composition of functions. And function operations, I'm going to subtract the two. So I have negative x squared minus 2x minus 4x plus 5. Remember, I have to distribute this negative. So this is really negative 4x minus 5. So negative 2x minus 4x is negative 6x. And negative x squared, there's no common term there. And there's no other 5. All right. Over here, we're going to multiply negative x squared minus 2x times 4x plus 5. Negative x squared times 4x is negative 4x to the third. Negative x squared times 5 is negative 5x squared minus 8x minus, oh, excuse me, 8x squared. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10x. So I have some like terms. So negative 4x to the third minus 13x squared minus 10x. And there you have it. Find g of f of negative 4. So we're going to plug in negative 4 to f first. So that's negative of negative 4 squared uh, minus 2 times negative 4. Negative 4 squared, that's 16. So negative 16 plus 8 is negative 8. So now we're going to plug negative 8 in. So 4 times negative 8 we're plugging it into g plus 5 is negative 32 plus 5, which is negative 27. 
And last but not least, we want to find f of g of x. So let's see here. I'm going to use my x, so I have negative of x squared minus 2 times x. So what is my x? g of x. So wherever I see my x is going to be 4x plus 5 in both of these spots. Now I have to multiply that by itself, so if you forgot, that's 4x plus 5 times 4x plus 5. All right, double distribute. If you're good, by now you under, you know the formula for this. That's going to be 16x squared plus 20x, excuse me, 40x plus 25. Distribute here, minus 8x minus 10. Uh, I have to distribute a negative, so negative 16x squared minus 40x minus 25. And then minus 8x minus 10. No other x squared, so negative 16x squared minus 48x minus 35. And there you have it. All right, that is 8.3. All right, so we want to graph the function and see if its inverse is a function. So this is going to be graphed like this, somewhat like this. Remember, when we want to see if the inverse is a function, we use the horizontal line test. If it meets in more than one place, it's not a function, and it does, so the inverse is not a function. All right, over here, finding the inverse, I plug my y, and I make it an x, and I make my x y, and then I solve. So I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides, so I have x minus 10 equals 4y to the fourth. I'm going to divide by 4, y to the fourth. Now, this is something we, we talk, haven't talked a lot about, but if I can simplify these things, I should. Now, 4 doesn't go in either one of these real well, but I could leave, do this. 1 fourth x and 10 divided by 4 is 5 halves minus 5 halves. I could do that, and that's fine. I'm going to show you both. Or x minus 10 over 4. I'm going to leave it here as well. The, the thing is, sometimes they are perfectly, come out perfectly. Like if this was 12x and 20, I would definitely divide by 4. So I'm going to take the fourth root of both sides. Remember, it's because you can even root. We have to do plus or minus. So our answer over here is going to be plus or minus the fourth root of one-fourth x minus five halves. All right? Same thing over here. Fourth root it. So my answer is going to be plus or minus x minus 10 over 4. All right? Either is okay. Again, if we get to a point where you can reduce that, you definitely should. If you, in this case, it's not necessarily reducible. All right, here we go. So we're going to graph these. This is the same thing as 2 times the square root of x minus 4 minus 3. Inside, it shifts left and right. We do the opposite, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down 3, 1, 2, 3. That's like our reference point. I remember that uh, uh, I go x1, the square root of 1 is 1 over 4, the square root of 4 is 2, but this time I'm doubling it. So I'm actually going to go up 2 and up 4. So over 1, up 2, over 1, 2, 3, 4, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we have that right there. Our domain is going to be all the x's greater than or equal to what? That's 3, right? Oh, excuse me, 4. Our range is all the y's greater than or equal to negative 3. All right, down here, there's no horizontal shift, so I go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I do 3, so instead of I go over 1, up 3, 1, 2, 3. Go over left, 1, 2, 3. And then I make my curve this way and my curve that way. My domain and range on this one would be all real numbers, right? It goes up and down forever and ever. Over here we have a cube root. That's the first thing. Looks like our reference point is right here. So that's a horizontal shift of 3. So I have to do the opposite, x minus 3. Does it move up and down at all? No. So right there we have y equals the cube root of x minus 3. All right, 8.6, we're solving these equations. So we want to... Do the opposite of subtract. We're going to add. We get 243 equals x minus 5 to the 5 thirds. So I have group inner exponents, so I need to undo the exponent. 
So I'm going to multiply the, our exponent this side of the 3 fifths, and i got to do this side of 3 fifths. 243 to the 3 fifths is 27. Opposite of minus 5 is plus 5. x equals 32. Now remember, if this bottom root here was an even number, I would have had a plus or minus. I would have had two different answers. But since it was an odd, I only had one answer. Down here, I need to get rid of the... A radical, so I square this side, I got to square that side. Squaring a square root undoes it, so now I have 7x plus 15 equals x plus 1 squared is x squared plus 2x plus 1. Subtract 7x, and you get negative 5x. Subtract 15, and you get negative 14. So that is equal to x minus 7 times x plus 2. Set x minus 7 equal to 0, and one of our answers is 7, and the other is negative 2. Now we need to check. So I'm going to plug in 7 times 7 is 49. 49 plus 15 is 64. So I have the square root of 64. Is that equal to 7 plus 1 is 8? Well, yes, the square root of 64 equals 8 is 8. Let's check this one. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14 plus 15 is 1, so I have the square root of 1. And over here I have negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. The square root of 1 is 1. Does that equal negative 1? No, it does not. So we only have one answer here, and that is number 7. All right, good luck on the Unit 8 test. This is Selvin signing out for Algebra 2. It's been real. It's been fun. I will see you on the flip side.